Welcome to Misconceptions and Difficult Concepts in Chemistry. Today we will be touching on this large and often misinterpreted area of covalent and ionic bonding. Let's have an example. Carbon dioxide. Is carbon dioxide does carbon dioxide molecule contain is it is it does it contain ionic bonding or does it contain covalent bonding? How do we go about knowing this? It's actually quite simple. So let's start with ionic bonding first. Ionic bonding, take note, just take note of this, it's usually between metals and non-metals. So you will see that this compound, for example, sodium chloride, this is a metal, this is a non-metal. Straight away you will think of ionic bonding. So this this compound here is an ionic compound. It is held together by ionic bonds, ionic bonding, one metal and one non-metal. Covalent bonding. Covalent bonding is between non-metals. Between non-metals. So for example, your carbon dioxide. Carbon is a non-metal, oxygen is a non-metal, so the bonding will be covalent bonding. So this is a covalent compound and this is an ionic compound. Alright? Straight it's straightforward, it's very easy to identify. Just look at the elements, see whether it's a metal, non-metal, or non-metal, non-metal, and you can go about deciding whether it's a metal ionic or covalent compound. Okay, the next thing that is also commonly misused is the term relative molecular mass. So sometimes you say that rel the relative molecular mass of, so of sodium chloride is 23 plus 35.5 which gives me 58.5 but this is actually wrong. Okay, because sodium chloride is an ionic compound so being an ionic compound we need to use relative formula mass. Relative formula mass is used for ionic compound. Relative molecular mass is used for covalent compounds. Alright? 